Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to Belgium once again and as I've promised you we're going to just make sure over the next few weeks and months and years and all of this that I do review some more Belgian beers because I did neglect it on the channel for quite some time. But for this one we are going to return to Brasserie Rochefort who you would have seen as part of the Trappist week that I did for you a few weeks back. So I'm definitely looking forward to this one. We're going to have a look at the heaviest of the beers that they produce. So this one is the Trappist de Rochefort 10 or 10 or blue however you want to actually name this beer but this one's a quadruple and it comes in at 11.3 percent so it should be a bit of a beast and you know quite rightly this beer is really highly regarded this is my very first time trying it I have tried the six for you before which was part of that series I also tried the eight the six is kind of something more along the lines of a patters beer or a dubel the number eight is more like a triple and then of course you've got the 10 here which is the big brother the quadruple my favorite Belgian styles of course probably are the triple and the quadruple just because they have the most flavour and of course they are the more boozy ones of the of the styles that you'll find in Belgium so definitely looking forward to this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer but anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery and the monastery as well since it's a Trappist beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Brasserie Rochefort before I think this is my third review and this probably might be the last one. I'm not sure if they do some other beers that I can review for you but I hope I can return to them in the near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there of course for all the Belgian beers that I've reviewed for you as well and please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys and the support that you give the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Brasserie Rochefort then. So the Rochefort Trappist Brewery is part of the Abbey Notre Dame de Saint-Rémy which is located in Rochefort in Namur province in Wallonie in the very southeastern part of Belgium. So the Abbey is actually part of the Cistercian Order of the Strict Observance and they currently have around 15 monks living and working on the site. So around the year 1230, Gilles de Walker founded a Cistercian nunnery which was called Secures de Notre Dame and later in 1464, Louis de Lamarck ordered the nuns to leave because the monastery had fallen into quite a state of disrepair and they were then replaced by monks. So during the 80 years war, the abbey had quite a turbulent time and it was ravaged by the Protestant armies of the 17 provinces in the year 1568 and then by John of Austria's armies in the year 1577. It's then thought that the first brewery was founded in the abbey around the year 1595, but during the 17th century, the abbey suffered from war, famine and plague, so brewing kind of had to take a back seat because of that. But in the early 1650s, the monks had to flee the abbey after it was invaded by an army from Lorraine under Baron Châtelet. And in 1789, the French Revolutionary Army invaded the Austrian Netherlands and the abbey was closed and then sold to Lucien Joseph Poncelet in the year 1797, who demolished the abbey and converted the lands to farmland in the year 1805. In 1887, however, Father Anselmus Judon from the Trappist Abbey of Achel came to the old abbey and bought the buildings and worked on restoring them and rebuilding the abbey. So the monks founded a new brewery, but it actually took until 1952 for the brewery to produce enough beer for commercial sale. But brewing has apparently been the, sigis, the single biggest income for the monastery since the 16th century. There was actually a big fire at the brewery in December 2010, which destroyed a large part of the abbey. Um, but the monks escaped. The, the monks escaped unhurt, and the actual brewery itself, the actual brewing apparatus, wasn't actually destroyed. But they had to put quite a lot of money into uh, restoring the abbey and getting it up and running again. But as is the case with all of these Trappist breweries, the whole idea is that the profits that they make from, from producing the beer, it goes into actually kind of keeping uh, monastic life, if you like, going. They use it to keep the abbey up to date and to uh, just keep it running, but all the extra money that they make goes to local charitable causes. So they are actually a really, these Trappist breweries are really interesting organisations. These guys produce three different beers. There's the six, as I mentioned to you, that's the red labelled one. That's somewhere along the lines of a Patters beer and a Dubel. They've got the eight, which is the green one. That's something along the lines of a Tripel. And then there's this guy here, the blue one, which of course is the quadruple. 
style and each of these beers tend to be brewed with Pilsner or Munich type malts and they use Hallertau hops from Germany and Goldings hops from England apparently so really really interesting brewery and these Trappist beers are very very good in my experience so if you get the chance to try some of those I highly recommend that you do and of course there is one brewery in the Netherlands but these guys are kind of the highlight of Belgian traditional beer of course so yeah really interesting beers from Trappist de Rochefort and I do recommend you try them if you get the chance but that's all you need to know about the beers and brewery just now let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer so as I mentioned to you this one is an 11.3% quadruple you can see on the side there 11.3% this is the blue label one they all have different colours like I mentioned it tells you a little bit in French and Dutch on the back I believe yeah, it's German, it has English, yeah, just brewed with water, malted barley and non-malted cereals, hops, yeast and sugars. But yeah, nicely presented this one. It has made in Belgium on the side, Abbey de Saint-Rémy Rochefort. And there you can see there is the bottle cap on this one. Each of these three beers that you get from Rochefort do have their own individual caps. And there you can see this is the shape of the Rochefort glass, of course. I do need to try and get a hold of some of these Trappist glasses because that would be quite a nice little collection to have. And you can see on the front label here, this is... Is the official Trappist symbol. So yeah, without further ado then, let's get this beer out and we'll get on with the taste and I'm really looking forward to this one. So yeah, nice smoky opening there. That's one thing you always, always, always have to watch when it comes to these Belgian beers. You just have to kind of be very careful when you're opening them up because they can sometimes explode and if you don't pour them properly you'll always get a massive head on them uh, just because of the, the, the bottle conditioning that they undergo. But this looks really nice. It is kind of what you would expect. I remember commenting on the La Trappe quadruple that it was actually a lot lighter than I would normally associate with uh, a quadruple beer from being. But this one is more along the lines of the colour that I'm normally used to. That big, dark, sort of chestnutty, rosewood kind of colour. So yeah, this one has poured exactly as I was expected to. There's a half finger of a quite bubbly, um, I'd say that's a sort of beigey tan head on this one. There is a little bit of sediment that's come out the bottle and it's just sitting on the top of that head there. But this beer, I think it's fair to say, is a really dark, chestnutty, kind of ruby mahogany colour. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there. But overall, it does look really nice. If I hold this beer up to the light, it does actually have a little bit of clarity to it, but it is quite hazy at the same time. But it looks really lovely. There's one or two big bits of sediment just floating around at the bottom there and a few smaller ones around the top. But I think it's just uh, you know it's just very small particles it shouldn't be too much of a problem for it but it looks kind of exactly as it's meant if i just bring up the camera up the camera there you can see some of those sediment particles just kind of floating around in it there but it looks a very very nice beer it is all natural so we can drink it well, there's a lot more actually around this side than there is on the other side but it should be nice anyway and we'll see how we get on so let's take a closer look at the aroma and see what it's like Oh, that smells amazing. That's an absolutely lovely smelling beer. It has this really kind of cakey, medicinal, herbal sort of quality to it. It just smells absolutely amazing. As I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beers before you actually try them. That's half the experience when it comes to craft beer. But that smells just ridiculous. It's incredible. So with this one, there's a lot of these dark kind of uh, brown sugar characters coming out of it. This really dark, nice sort of treacle flavour, dark molasses, all of these kind of things. There's a little bit of lighter, sweeter caramel there. The beer does have an element of roastiness to it as well. But overall, it's this big kind of boozy cakey note that's coming out of it. It really has a very kind of cough syrupy, medicinal quality to it. And that would just be the sheer booziness of it. I mean, at 11%, 11.3% rather, this beer is a bit of a beast, even by Belgian standards. This is one of the heavier ones that you're going to come across in Belgium. No doubt about that. But it smells lovely. When you get more used to the aroma, you can pick up a little bit of a sort of woody, nutty undertone to this. But the, the note on this one for me that's really jumping out is that sort of cakey, uh, herbal, medicinal, cough syrupy quality that the beer has. You can smell a little bit of the earthiness from the hops, a wee bit of grassiness as well maybe, but there's quite a lot of a, a red, a sharp red fruity ester coming out of this, some plums, some raisins, I'm not really quite sure about figs, it definitely has more of the kind of sharpness that you would expect 
of plums and raisins, but really it's that sort of cakey, fruit cakey and boozy caramel note that's coming out of this one. But it's a lovely smelling beer, so just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of it before you actually get stuck into the beer. It really does smell quite nice. And I can see why, just on the basis of the aroma, I'm very, very excited about this beer. So let's not leave it any longer then. Let's get stuck into this one. So this one is the Trappist Rochefort Dies, the blue one from the Ro from Brasserie Rochefort in Rochefort, Belgium. Let's get stuck in. Santé. Oh yeah. That beer is a monster. That's an absolute monster of a beer. It's just lovely. I'm just wondering how long. This one is best before the 15th of the 5th, 2018. I can't remember when I got this beer actually, but it was sat in my box for a little while. So the flavour will change very slightly over time, but at this point, it is lovely. That's an awesome, awesome beer. There's no doubt in my mind. I guess with these Belgian beers, one of the indicators of how old they are might be the carbonation, because as I said, these beers do tend to be bottle conditioned, so the carbonation will get a little bit more as the fermentation process continues, because you get more CO2 released as the yeast converts things into uh, converts the sugars into alcohol, and the, the carbonation does tend to be quite lively when it comes to Belgian beers I've found. But this is really damn good. If you get the chance to try this, just go and buy it. I can see, you know, it's fair to say straight away, I can see why this beer is so highly rated. So yeah, let's have a look at this more closely then. So the middle of your palate really is just blanketed with this nice kind of light brown bready character. On top of that, you can detect a little bit of this kind of thicker, that lovely kind of thick doughy Belgian yeast. But it's actually, this one to me feels a little bit lighter than some of the other ones I've come across. It's definitely lighter than the La Trappe Quadrupel. It's got a little, it's just, the, the breadiness is just that little bit lighter. It doesn't quite have the same doughy quality that that had. Yeah, that's fair to say. This one really leans more towards the kind of dark, treacle molasses sort of thing but at the same time it has a really nice almost honeyish flavour to it. It's got that lighter kind of biscuity honeycomb flavour just at the top end and you can feel all of these things just building on that light kind of brown bready base that the beer has. There's a good bit of cakey flavour in the middle of your palate there as well and it kind of moves on as the flavour progresses it moves on to kind of have that kind of cough syrupy flavour that I was talking about. It's got that nice herbal medicinal quality to it. But that's a lovely, lovely beer. Make no mistake about that. Again, one of the notes you'll pick up in this, it has this really lovely oaky flavour to it. There is a little bit of an almost vanilla flavour in there too. There's the vanilla oakiness and there's a wee bit of spiciness to the wood as well. There's so many kind of undertones going on in this beer. It's a, it's, this is probably one of the most complex beers that I've come across. I think I said the same about the West Letter in 12. The La Trappe one that I tried was a little bit more straight up, but then the bottle was fresher, so I guess if you bought a bottle of that La Trap and aged it, you would start to get even more kind of complexity to it than it already had. But with this one, the kind of woody and nutty flavours, the cakiness, the sort of medicinal quality, it's all just really, really nice. It just goes together so well, and all these flavours blend together in just a really quite incredible way. I think it's fair to say I can see exactly why this beer is rated so highly and this is one of the reasons why I really love the Tripel and also the Quadrupel. The Quadrupel just has a little bit more complexity to it but the Tripel is just a really nice beer with a little bit more hoppiness to it I would say. That's why these two styles are my favourite when it comes to Belgian beer. But that's really damn good. The medicinal quality in this, that cough syrupy flavour that it has is just lovely. And it sort of pulls everything else together, the cakiness, the woodiness, the nuttiness, just everything. It's such a good beer, this. That's, this this one probably is one of my favourite Belgian beers that I've reviewed for you on the channel. They've all, all the Trappist beers are very, very good quality. The West Mala Triple 
is a lovely, lovely beer, and the Latrap Quadruple was really good as well. They've all been some really damn good beers, but I would say this one probably is up there in my top two or three when it comes to Belgian beer. This one's just lovely. On the hoppy side of things, it is pretty much what you'd expect. In the back corners of the palate, it's a little bit earthy. As you come further forward, you can feel it becomes a little bit more herbal. There's a wee bit of floral character at the front corners of the palate, and then a nice lighter kind of uh, grassy note around the very front curve of the tongue. And it just, that blends together very, very well. It builds a good bridge between the different flavours. On the fruity side of things, this one's really quite interesting. There is a little bit of the sharpness that you would expect of raisins and plums. For me though, it's got a little bit more of a dried fruity character to it. It's got a little bit of dates or, uh, or apricot or something like that in there. It's these, the, the way the fruity character on this one comes out is really interesting. It actually kind of matches very well with that slightly vanilla oaky flavour that the beer has. It's just, there's just so, so much going on in this beer. It always keeps you on your toes. It's just, it's so good. This definitely, as I say, it was one of my top two or three Belgian beers that I've reviewed for you. But yeah, as I said, on the fruity side of things, some raisiny plum sharpness, definitely a kind of nice quite rich figginess to it, some dried peaches, apricots, probably sultanas as well. Sultanas is maybe a kind of good uh, descriptor for this one because you've got a few different dried fruits in there and that's what this one tastes like. I think, yeah, go for sultanas with a descriptor for this one. But it's a lovely, lovely beer and if you get the chance to try it, then I highly recommend that you do. It's just, it's a damn good beer. There's no two doubts about that in my mind. So if you get the chance to try this, I highly recommend that you do. In terms of the mouthfeel of this beer then, I would say it's full bodied. The carbonation is quite lively in this one. Again, that might be down to the age of the beer and the carbonation will increase a little bit as you age the beers more and more. The mouth the, the mouth feel generally is quite an oily one. It does have a little bit of wetness to it. It's not quite as oily as some of the other quadruples that I've tried. The malt base really is quite sweet, but it's got a little bit of a dark sweetness to it. As I was saying, the cakey and the sort of woody flavours that the beer has. The hops are very smooth and the fruits are quite nice and juicy and oily at the same time. But overall, like I said, this is a really, really damn good beer. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to have this one again. I would like to try it just when it's a fresher bottle and see how it compares to this one, which is maybe, I think it's maybe about two years old, this bottle and just see what the comparison is, but this is a really damn nice beer and I really recommend that you get a hold of this and try it for yourself. This is probably one of the most complex Belgian beers that I've come across before and it's really good. This this kind of shows me, again, why my favourite beers from Belgium are the Tripel and the Quadrupel, so make sure you try this for yourself and see how you get on. But yeah, it's been really cool to return to Brasserie Rochefort once again and try the, the number 10 because I've never ever tried this beer before, but it's turned out to be a really, really good one. Probably one of my favourite reviews I've done for a little while actually, but I hope you've enjoyed my take on this beer. As always, do let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beer is out of the Rochefort range, but this one for me probably is my favourite out of the three but let me know your own thoughts on this one and the other beers and until the next time thank you for watching please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff and uh, i will catch you very soon but hopefully we can return to this brewery in sometime in the near future so slanger just now and i will catch you guys very soon the trappist rochefort 10 from brasserie rochefort one of the trappist breweries over in belgium cheers sante